So one of the, wait, and first off, introduce yourselves, actually. So we, we'll start with you. Um, my name is Brianna Bird. I am from Philadelphia. And what else should I say? Oh, I'm a junior, and my major is journalism. You're from North Philly, right? North Philadelphia, yes. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, my name is Sung Chan, but I also go by Nathan. I'm a sophomore, and I'm a business student right now. Wait. So Sung Chan. And you are, but you are, well, hang on, I'll come, we'll come back to that. I'm Ariana. I am a senior majoring in accounting, and I'm from Easton, Pennsylvania. Easton, Pennsylvania. All right, so listen, I want to have a conversation about um, impression management, okay? And impression management is this thing that we're doing all the time as human beings. We are managing the impressions of other people. When we put our clothes on, when we do our hair, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we engage people, the way we shake hands, with the certain dialects or certain words that we choose to use or not words, whatever it is, however it is, right? The way, you know, we, the, 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 clo the, the clothing we wear, the cars we buy, the majors and height, whatever it is, right? Everything, the impression management is baked into the human condition because historically speaking, it's how we survive in the groups. You know, it's really, you got to like assess what, who you're with and all the dangers out there in life. You want to move yourself forward and stay aware of the dangers and go toward people and things that actually will make it more likely that you will really thrive. And so we're going to manage these impressions. And lots of other species do it as well. There's like a, I remember reading about this um, species of seagull where there's a, a male gulls that sometimes are, they're like, they're transgendered in a way that they'll like fluff their feathers up, the male gulls, so they look more female, and then they go and hang out with the females, right? So in a way, they're managing impressions to hang out with these female gulls, which is really fascinating, by the way. Um, so so let, me, let me just start. Actually, Brianna, let's start with you. So you went to a private Catholic school, right? Well, so, say, so you're in North Philly, went to a private Catholic <coughs> school. Yeah, so I live in North Philadelphia, but the high school that I went to was still in North Philadelphia. It was just at the end of it, kind of close to, if you know Philadelphia, kind of close to like Uptown. Uh -huh. um, and it was called Crystal Ray Philadelphia High School. And um, with the private Catholic school, we had to have internships every year. And so my first year um, as a freshman, I interned at a law firm and then... <clears throat> My last three years, I interned at um, a mortgage company. Okay, so tell me, so where, where for you, being from North Philly, mm -hmm. so the moment you say, if you're in Philly, the moment you say from North Philly, what's the impression of you? Uh, ghetto, loud, <laughs> um, which is true, but... Um, poor? Poor, very, but which is true is not a wrong thing to say, it's just... It's wrong to think that once you see me and not even, like, know my backstory or stuff okay. like that. So then tell me about, so when you're, you're going to this private school, so immediately you're, uh, where does impression management come in, right? Because you're entering this school, it's a private school, you're like, okay, I got to be what? I want these people to think what about me? Um, I had to always, like, feel like I was put together, but... My high school was predominantly black and Hispanic, so I didn't feel like I had to manage myself for them because I knew a lot of people f from those same neighborhoods mm -hmm. that I'm from. Yep. It was more so when I went to my job, and that's why I said that we had to do internships because I don't mind. I, don't, I didn't have to code switch or manage myself in school. I felt like I didn't Got have you. to. Okay, yep. But when I went to both of my jobs, it was like, I had to present myself a certain way. I didn't wear skirts at school because I just didn't feel comfortable. But I wore a skirt when I went to work, you know, just to mm -hmm. show that, you know, you, you get real, like, when women wear pants instead of skirts or pants instead of dress dresses, it's like they think stuff. So I had to really just, like, present myself in a specific way. And, and how? Because you wanted them to think what? 
that I could do the work that they had me to do and that I can um I can be in the setting that they had me in. Mm-hmm. And they and that you weren't and that you weren't ghetto yeah. or you weren't you know whatever, right? You you right. were talented. How do, how how did you change the way you spoke? Um like certain words I won't say. Like when I was at work I didn't say John. I didn't say bull. I didn't say stuff like that. John. Yeah, right. like that John over there. I didn't say stuff like that. That paper over there, you know? Yeah. Um, I went down that John. I went down the stairs. Like, I just didn't say certain words. John is like one of those words. Can you, like, t- can you teach people? Dude, do you know what John means? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, can you teach people that don't know what John means, what John means? John is a noun. It can be used to describe a person, place, or thing. <laughs> Including that microphone. This is a John that I'm talking to. These, are, these beads are John. You are John. I'm yeah. a John, too. Yeah, damn, man. I know, it's crazy. Okay, so, okay, so you, you're going into this, was, was the law firm and the mortgage firm, were they mostly white firms, or? Yes. Well, my, um, the law firm that I went to, that I worked at my freshman year, I was very fortunate to have um, black women as my supervisors, and I say that because that law firm was ran by white men, uh-huh. and from what the black women that I work with would tell me about the law firm just in general and who ran it, I was very fortunate to be placed with those mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. young women. Mm-hmm. So, you're, so you're in there. You're ma- every day you're managing. How about, your, how about your hair? How'd you do your hair? Oh, so my school, okay, so that's a good thing. My school was predominantly black and Hispanic, but we couldn't wear afros. We couldn't wear our hair a certain way. We couldn't color wear, wait, it. You couldn't wear your hair natural? I, could, I would have to slick it down. I would have to wear box braids. Like, we, my class, like, class of 2019, we kind of, like, rioted. Not really, but, like, we just, we wasn't standing for it. So in school, which was my private school, was ran by a white man. Our president was a white man. He didn't understand that majority of the kids who attended the school don't have straight hair or don't have the hair that is deemed yeah. presentable. Yeah. And it was like, how are you going to not let us do this? And it's mainly us here. And so when we went to work, it was, but it was more so because of the jobs we had. Uh-huh. But uh-huh. when I went to work, I, I had to slick my hair down or it had to be presentable. You had to stay back from work if you didn't look right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, so the whole thing, so this impression management, how about up here, hang on, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to come back to you. Um, Sung, so you are, you are the vice president of the Korean students, as the president of the Korean Student Association. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah? Yeah. And you are, you, are, are you Korean or are you American? Um, I mean, I'm Korean, but I grew up in the U.S. But, yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, you're, I, met, I, I guess what I meant was, is your uh, nationality or is your passport oh, Korean? Oh, I gave up my Korean citizenship like three years ago, so I'm American, yeah. And so you speak English with an American accent? Yeah. yeah. And in Korean, how, how's your Korean? I mean, I think my Korean's pretty good. Um, Accent-wise, I think it's like a Seoul accent, but I'm not sure, uh-huh. to be honest. But uh-huh. yeah, I've never had anyone like tell me that my accent was different but it's still not like perfect you know okay so um how many students in the korean student how many students are there in the association um like official members maybe like 50 and And how many of them are from korea and how many are korean americans it's like a mix of a lot i would say like well it depends because people that come to our events might not be like part of the club Mm mm-hmm so if I go off that, like, I would say, like, around 30%, 25% might be from Korea. Uh-huh. And then around 50% of that would be Korean American. And then okay. the other, like, percent would be, like, anybody else, to be okay. honest. Okay. Yeah. So let's think about this question of both code switching. First off, is there anything with the code switching piece that you related to with la- language itself? Uh, kind of like when I speak like English to like people who speak English, it's more like casual and stuff. But when I speak Korean, I try to be more polite when I talk to people. Try to be more polite. Yeah, try to be a little more polite. Yeah. Like more, you want to be more polite, more formal. Yeah, more. a little more formal. Uh huh. Yeah. And 
how, so how do you how do you relate to the impression management piece as the as the you know with you being Korean here and Korean American and like how does that operate in the Korean community here? Um, so I would say that when I talk to like Korean international students, uh, like when I try to make my first impression, I try to like impress them by talking about stuff about Korea that I know that they won't think that that I would know. Um, and I try to like use like fancy words sometimes in Korean. Yeah. But um, and when I talk to like Korean American students, if I do speak to them in Korean, it's more like even if I make a mistake, I'm gonna just keep spitting it out. Uh huh. And then, it, it yeah. won't matter. Yeah, it won't matter to be honest. Yeah. So when you say you want, you're trying to impress them. Like, what's the and what's the purpose of that? Uh, just to make sure they don't think that I'm not like. Just to, like I get acknowledged as Korean, I guess something like that. Uh huh. Get acknowledged as Korean, meaning yeah, slightly, like yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, because listen, I mean, think about this. This is the Korean Student Association, the Student Association for all Korean students at Penn State, and the president of the association is the guy who gave up his Korean citizenship to adopt a U.S. citizenship. So it's like, wait, why am I joining the Korean Student Association when it's an American who's the president of the, stu- of the association? So do you, feel, do you feel that? Is there like a, or do, do you, is that a message that you fear sometimes? Like, wh- where is that? Let's walk into that. I mean, like, I would say that, like, sometimes Korean international students don't want to, like, they want to just hang out by themselves, which I understand. But I feel like if someone that's from Korea joins, like, my club, that means they're interested already in, like, Korean-American stuff. Yep. Um, yep. They're not too, like, opposed to stuff like that. And I never really told anyone I gave up my Korean citizenship. But, I mean, I had to give that up because I didn't want to go to the military. Yeah. And, you know, it, for me, it didn't make sense serving in the military if I didn't live in Korea. I was just born there. So, yeah. um, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you're yeah. Bo- let's be really clear. Cause this, because we're talking about Korea, so this video will go get translated and in Korean and it will go out so let me say something to Koreans who are going to watch this video yeah the the issue is that if you're born if you're born here I mean if you're born there and you come here like what's the point of it because every able-bodied man has to join the Korean military for what 18 months right yeah something like that 18 months so like you got so like what would be the point of him joining the going back and joining the military like and and like when he's never gonna you're never gonna live you're never going to no, live I'm there. No, I'm not going to live there. Yeah. Okay. So the idea then is um, you're, you, as part of being Korean here, and this is true with a lot of international students, like you're, or people who are really connected to international students, you're managing all the time, like how you're seen and not seen. And, but in, and it's, not a, it's not a bad thing, right? It's fine. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just part of what life is. Like we're all managing all the time. So... You said you try to use like fancy words. What's like a word that you would use? I mean, it would have to come up in the conversation, like certain like vocabulary words that I would pick up on. Not I like c- somac or something like that. Somac. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, like uh, words that like are kind of like not what's it called like slang words. Slang. Yeah. If I could use that sometimes, like they'll be like, oh, you know, so stuff like so, that. Somac is when you take soju. You know what soju is, bro? Oh, you wouldn't know. You're you're Muslim. Why would you know, bro? You know what? You know what soju is. All right. Yeah, soju's like Korean liquor. It's like the most popular one there. Yeah. Dude, soju is by far and away the most widely most popular spirit in the world. It's not whiskey. It's not rum. It's not vodka. It's soju, right? And so, the, in fact, a, a number of years ago, the number one and number three top selling spirits in the world were both Korean brands of soju. So if you haven't tried it, anyway, you mix soju with beer and it's called somak. Somak? Did I yes. say that right? Yeah, somak, yeah. Somak, all right. Um, how about dress? I mean, when it comes to like how I dress, it, I, I honestly don't change how I dress for certain people. I mean, I just wear what I wear. Um, so you're not thinking about it? Yeah, wait, I'm not thinking about that. Wait, bro, so when you, but when you're going to have a meeting, like 
with the organization, with your club. Do you, do you, how, what, do you, what do you think about with your dress, or do you not? Are you just like every other guy at Penn State? You just throw yeah. clothes on and go. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. It's not like a professional Except club. Gabe, it's man. more casual club. More so, casual. Yeah, like okay. even if we like meet for like meetings with the execs and all that, like it's not like we're pulling up with like button down shirts and stuff. It's just like whatever you wear. Um, I got you. Yeah. Um, when's the last time you were in Korea? Last time I was in Korea, um, when I was in fifth grade, I went to Korea and I studied there for like a year. Uh huh. So yeah. Uh huh. Cool. Ariana, so so, what's your story? What's your background? Um, my dad's Puerto Rican and my mom's just white. She's like Irish and Italian or something. And, and do you connect with, how much do you connect with your Puerto Rican, with your roots, Irish and Italian and then Mm -hmm. Puerto Rican? Um, so on my mom's side, I mostly connect with my Italian. My grandfather is like really heavy on that. And I, like most of my life, I hung out with my mom's side of the family a little bit when I was younger, I would hang out with my dad's side a little bit, um, but my mom would bring me to like these events, so I would hang out with my cousins. We would have like barbecues, so I'd say maybe up to like till I was like eleven or twelve, I would hang out with them probably like evenly as my mom's side. Mm-hmm. But then like after that, I kind of just not that I like cut contact with them. It was just something a relationship with my dad and his side of the family. Mm-hmm. He just like cut it, so I didn't really talk to them as much anymore. Okay, so you, what's your last name? Lozada. Lozana? Lozada, L-O-Z-A-D-A. Yeah, yeah. Lozada. So, Ariana Lozada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, tell me, so, Spanish. Where are you with Spanish? Um, I don't really understand it. I took, I took the AP test in high school and I got a one. Um, and then I took a Spanish three here at Penn State when I was a freshman. And I think I got like a B minus. So I can read it and write it more than I could speak it or like understand if somebody spoke it to me. So, okay. So you are, but you, but you're like half Hispanic, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so, no, so listen, hang on. I, I want to say this. When we have a part of our background, like there, like there are many people in the, many white people in this room who are like Irish or German or Italian and they don't really connect with it. And then maybe they, think they should, but I don't really, and I, I don't know, and, but there's no shame, there's no, there's nothing, there's no pressure associated with that, you either, like, connect or you don't, it doesn't matter, like, how, there, there's probably, well, what I would say is, at least 30% of the white people in this room have German ancestry, and no one feels bad about the fact that they don't, like, really connect with their German ancestry, it's just not a thing, that's part of it, but when you're a person of color, or in your case, a person half of color, right? Yeah. Um, there's a there's like a should part of it. So do you feel that pressure? How much do you feel that pressure? Like I should connect and. Um, I feel it a lot. Like probably every day. I think it grew more when I came to college. Like my high school was a little bit diverse. Like there was like a lot of Hispanic people, but I didn't really connect with them. I did like can hide a lot of white friends. So I feel like I got whitewashed then, but when I came to college, I realized, like, there's so many different people. Like, I kind of felt bad that I didn't, like, accept my Hispanic side until then, you know? Mm, Okay. And so now you're really in the space of exploring your Hispanic side, your Puerto Rican side. Mm -hmm, For sure. And how, like, how? What do you see? What do you imagine you would get from that? Maybe, like... I'm kind of hoping that maybe I'll develop, like, as I see, like, the Hispanic culture, especially, like, Puerto Rican culture, maybe I'll pass that down to my children. Like, I didn't have my dad who taught me, like, anything. Like, I'm pretty sure he didn't teach me. He taught me zero about Puerto Rico and stuff like that. So, I don't know, maybe I would get, like, some... I forget. I can't think of the word right now, but like their traditions. There you go. Like some traditions that they would do. Or, like, Hispanic food. Like, I want to pass that along or something like that Mm -hmm. yeah which is completely natural like it's cool um and so spanish Mm -hmm. you so you don't do people when you try to speak spanish people like laugh yeah yeah they well i actually tried to speak spanish the other day to this girl at work and um she was like oh that wasn't right like i think i like mixed up like a star and ser which mean the same thing but obviously like you use it in a different context 
And she was like, oh, it's supposed to be like a story. And I was like, oh, if I were to say that, would you still like understand? And she was like, yeah, but we would definitely make fun of you. I was like, oh, okay. So like, this that's is great. <laughs> right. So for you, that's so when now we think about impression management, right? Mm -hmm. Like for you to even step your toe in the water of saying, hey, I want to just have a I just want to explore this culture, this piece of my culture a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just speak Spanish a little bit and then the moment you put some Spanish out there and people come down on you it's like okay well that's not happening yeah. which sucks can you not do that can you know, like do, please those don't of, do it <laughs> yeah like those of you who know a language if someone's trying to learn learn a little bit of your language do not do not be dicks god don't be don't be a-holes like come on man it's just part of it so so for you this is like when impression management is like you have to walk into an Hispanic environment saying like you can't you can't really announce that I'm Hispanic. Yeah. <laughs> because. Just because I feel like they would first of all they would expect me to speak Spanish and like know like literally all these like facts about something or whatever and I'd be like oh no I don't and they'd be like. Like, they'll judge you if you don't speak Spanish. Yeah. And they'll be like, why? But then, like I said, if I try to, like, they would judge me again. So it's okay. like a lose-lose right. situation. So culturally, like, so in terms of your roots, you're Hispanic, but, um, which is a sociological category. But, like, they're, they're, you only have a few different pieces of the traditions. But you want to have more, but yet it's hard to have more because every time you walk into a space, you have to manage the impressions of all these people who may or may not accept you. And because of that, it's like, uh, okay, like, how do I do this then, mm -hmm. right? So, Sung, that's not, that's less of an issue with you because you speak Korean at like an 85 or 90% fluency rate, right? Yeah, I really never had that problem with like being afraid of speaking Korean or something like that, but. Plus you look Korean. I mean, you are Korean. Yeah, yeah. Biologically, you are Biologically, Korean. Biologically, yeah, I'm full Korean, yeah. But with, like when I see Ariana, I, I feel like, uh, no, I was telling her before class, like I see in, like some Indian features, like your nose and so on, and your cheeks. So like I see that come out for her. But I would see her and think, especially her name is Ariana. So I'm going to think, okay, you're Latina, right? So, or part of you is Latina anyway. So you, I, I would just, not expect you to speak Spanish, but I would expect you, I would just assume that about you at some level. So for you, that's not, but that's, has that piece of it wasn't an issue. It's not like a big issue, I would say. Like maybe slight, but not But you think much. about it. Think about it every now and then, yeah. Yeah. Anything else that when Ariana was talking that came up for you that you think about that's kind of... Um, I would say just in general, like... Like, when I speak Korean to, like, let's say someone that's from Korea, like, they know that I'm not from Korea when I talk. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I have that in the back of my head as well. Like, oh, they know that I'm just from America. But I've never felt embarrassed or, like, anything like that uh -huh. from it. I think I'm just trying to be more confident about it. And, like, if they do think that my Korean is bad or anything like that, that just means I have to improve on it, but stuff like that. Yeah. Or it's really more about them, right? Yeah. But the, the difference, though, in, with Korea is that Koreans, the, the, uh, a huge swath of Koreans really want to learn English. Like, so for, for, many, for many, many Koreans, they would rather be you. They, there's so many people that would rather speak English with an American accent like you do oh, okay. and be 85% fluent in Korean. Like, that would be great for them. Am I right about that? No, that does make sense because I know that they take English seriously in Korea as well. Yeah. They have like exams for it and stuff. And I know that if you can speak English fluently in Korea, it's like you're like seen as slightly more educated maybe. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly more educated. And it's just like it's a cool thing, right? The whole like K, K culture, all the pieces of K culture. It's a, it's a thing. It's really. And yet Koreans are so shy. When I talk to Koreans um, and I because I'm always uh, either typing to Koreans or having Zoom sessions with Koreans. And like, there, so many people are really shy. Like Korean YouTubers, they take a lot of my videos in this class and they translate them into Korean. And, I say, and I'll be like, hey, why don't you like, this, this is amazing. This is cool. Like their English is perfect. 
And then I'll say, why don't you join the class someday? Like, or let's Skype. Like, let's like, let's do a, let's do a, uh, let's do something together. And like, oh, no, 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 my English is terrible. And I'm like, I'm, and then I finally talk to them and their English is awesome. But the idea is there's just that way of being in Korean culture that's very, I don't know, thoughtful, very, yeah, very, very modest. Would you say, would you? Is that it? Yeah, I would say, yeah. Even my, like, parents, they, like, learned English here because they work here now. And, like, they're pretty good at English. Obviously not with, like, an American accent, but they can speak it and have a conversation pretty well. But they're still afraid to speak it to, like, American people, you mm-hmm. know? So they got to, like, like, build the confidence for that as well. They're and afraid to speak because? Uh, their accent maybe they don't know a few words but their english is good so that's the thing and then they and then they have to manage impressions Mm -hmm. so that somehow it's okay yeah like when we first moved into our neighborhood like our neighbors were like white and stuff and my dad was like i had to like give him confidence to talk to them in english and stuff for the first time and it worked out well so cool yeah yeah very cool hey brianna has have we has anything come up here that like you are going, you're thinking like, oh yeah, that. Um. Yeah, when Ariana, is that how you say it? Am I saying it right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the Ari, Ariana, it's almost like a D instead of an R. Like right. not Ariana, it's like mm. Ariana. I took Spanish for three semesters. No, so I don't know it. <laughs> um, but um, when you was talking about like how half of you, like half of your, his, like when you try to, learn Spanish and stuff like that and basically kind of like not getting accepted. I don't understand it from a personal sense because I'm not Hispanic, but I see it all the time. And like, I think that's why like a lot of the stuff with cultures, why we're hindered in that area because people are not accepting of it, especially like even in the black culture in some sense, yeah, there's rejection to other black people, even yeah. like and I hate to say it, but even like like um, have like people that's half black. Yeah, for sure. When they try to get on their black side, some people yeah. in the black community reject them. Yeah. I yeah. haven't had to experience that, but I see it all the time. So I kind of understood what you were saying with that and how like that's hard and that's like it hinders you from even wanting to express it or like learn it. So that that goes with the conversation we had on Tuesday. And, like, I was thinking that with Jaden. We never, I never asked him that question, but that's kind of like... So let me ask you, though. As someone who's of African... Are you African-American or are you... I don't know where I'm from in the sense of where I'm from. I just know I'm from Philly and I'm black. That's all I know. So you're, you, probably, you probably have extended family members, though, from the South, like Virginia, North Carolina. Yeah, South how did you know that? Yeah. Dude, I know, you know. I, I'll tell you, no. <laughs> so, okay, so therefore... You're uh, a- ADOS, as we say, right? American sure. descendant of slavery. Okay, so, but you, but then, but you're African American, right? Black American. So, like, so, but you must have an impression management thing that also goes on. It was like, so, what do you know about Africa, right? Yes. Like, um, let me tell you just a quick story. I was at one of my jobs on campus at a cafe, and this one guy, he came over to me. He asked me where I was from. I'm like, I'm from Philadelphia. He was like, oh, you're black. And then he said, do you sell drugs? I'm like, no. He was like, oh, where are you from? I said, Philadelphia. He said, no, like, what part of Africa? I'm like, not sure. Like, I didn't know how to answer that. And he was making assumptions of, like, where I'm from, what I do because of me being black, and I never had to experience, like, having to explain that I'm not from Africa, or at least I don't know if I'm from Africa or not. But it was just really, like, left field. I've never experienced it, and I experienced it last semester. Okay, but let me, but okay, so, so let me ask you this. How do you experience it with other Africans, though? Like, because there's this thing between Africans and African Americans, the ADOS community. But that, it's like, that you know, lots of people who are African American who... You know, like maybe we'll wear symbols or be try. You know, try to be connected to Af- some African culture, whatever it is. It's usually West African. It's going to be Niger- Nigerian or Ghanaian or something. But like, how much do you feel like 
ah, I should know or I should be connected or I should whatever. I'll wear an oxen or wear something that symbolizes a connection to Africa. Is that part of a? Because that's an impression management among a lot of black people. Um, I I would say, I would say because of where I'm from, specifically in Philadelphia, we didn't. At least from what I know, yeah. it wasn't like a this where we had a lot of Africans and Jamaicans here and stuff yeah. like that. So, but there are places in Philly that is like that. And, you know, we call them poppy land. We call them that's where the Africans stay. That's where yeah. Jamaicans go. But I wasn't exposed to that even when I went to high school. Yeah, not a lot of people from my high school were like had that background. So I never felt that pressure in a sense. It wasn't until I came to college and I met two of my friends that's from New York. And one of my friends is from St. Lucia. And then the other one is like Panamanian or something like that. Yeah. And it was like a cultural shock because they would say things like they had an accent. I've never met black people that had accents in a sense of like an accent like mine, like from Philly or whatever. So um, I didn't really get to experience any of that until I got to college with being exposed to a lot of other different cultures. Yeah. But that's just my personal experience in Philly. People in Philadelphia may have a different say to that, but I never felt pressure of being like, what do you know about Africa? What part of Africa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. never yeah. that until I got here. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, like what, what, I'm, what I, I was saying, like there are a lot, there's a sentiment, yeah. there's a thread in the African community here. Mm-hmm. And the thread is kind of like you have all these people who call themselves Mm african-americans but who have zero connection to africa at all and they and there's like a little bit of kind of a resentment somehow i mean you know you know how it is right yeah i was um i was on like tiktok like about a week or so ago and it 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 is that argument of like africans being not i don't want to say upset because that's not all africans you no, know no, no. Yeah. but some africans have do have problems with black people in america that call themselves african-american and i know like when certain things came out like when the black panther came out and then when beyonce did her homecoming thing on netflix it was a sense of oh our culture our roots let's go back home and i know some people that's from there that was like we don't want y'all here like yeah, stuff like yeah, that yeah right this isn't your home you're right. Americans, man. Yeah. Like you're Americans. That's not your home. And so when you try, when you're trying to have these deep connections to Africa, you're just like being silly in a way because you don't want to go to Africa. You're not going to live in Africa. You're going to go to Africa and you're going to stay at some like kind of resort or something, mm-hmm. you know? And, and yeah, yeah. So that yeah, I mean, it's this thing that have. So you got to manage those impressions, right? So so then, if you're around Africans, you would have to manage those impressions to be like, hey man, I'm not trying to be African here. Like I recognize I'm from North Philly. I'm African American. It's cool. It's got that. So I'm not trying to be something other than I am. That would be a way of managing impressions, I suppose. Well, I would say, well, that's not Africa, but. From other, like, I've, my, most of my friends that I did meet that aren't just, like, from Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. They are, like, Caribbean or have Caribbean right. ties. Right, So not more, I haven't really met a lot of Africans, per se, yep. but more uh, people that are from, like, the Caribbean uh, side. And so yeah. with them, like, I pick up stuff that they say, like, you know, some, some um, Caribbean people, they suck their teeth. And yeah. so, like, the... Like that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. when I first met two, my friends um, that are from New York, they did that. I'm like, are you kissing me? Like kissing at me? Because that's what my mom used to say. Don't, you know, don't yeah, suck your yeah, teeth. Yeah. But that's a part of their culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I feel as though I've, more, I've been more like accepted more than rejected when it comes to I got you. that. Yeah. Side. yeah, there are just a few things you got to learn like that. See, yeah. Ariana, you, you know that, right? You just yeah. learn a few key things. Mm-hmm. By the way, don't, don't, hey, that's cool. Thanks, man. I, I really like that. Don't try to learn Spanish from Puerto Ricans because they don't speak Spanish. I don't know what they speak, but it's not, they, are you Puerto Rican? Dude, <laughs> are you fluent? Do, do you know how fast, like how Puerto Rican, how fast they speak? It's like, you speak normal, like, like you go to Ecuador and people speak Spanish at like 40 miles an hour 
And you go to Puerto Rico, it's like 150 miles an hour. It's like, oh, shit. And cut, you cut off all sorts of words because you can't speak that fast and not cut off words. I was like, oh, my God. And you're trying to learn Puerto Rican Spanish. And, like, that's just not. Not the wave, I guess. Not going to be. Yeah. Go to, you need to go to the, to the mountains, to the Andes <laughs> regions of Ecuador or Peru or Bolivia. It's nice and slow. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that we can kick out? I had a question for you, Ariana. Is that did I say it right? You did. Okay. Nice. Um, I don't think you touched on this, but did your hair play a part in how you had to like present yourself? Um, no, I was actually thinking about that when you like brought it up. I was like, oh my gosh, should I have to do that? But I feel like, like literally, since I was so young, like I was surrounded by just like white people, and I feel like I like vividly remember. I didn't like want to be, I wanted to be white. Like I didn't want to be yeah. colored. Like that's just all I remember thinking. So like, I feel like from that beginning of that like mindset up until like maybe mid high school, like I always felt like I fit in. I mean, my hair is like curly, but like, it's not like, I don't know. I don't really know how Hispanic, how Hispanic hair is supposed to be, but like, it's always been like curly. I don't, I mean, I can't really like straighten it or anything like that. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't stay straight. It curls up again, but, or like I can't, like use a wand to like curl my hair like it just doesn't work so like maybe stuff like that like that I couldn't do like for like prom I kind of had to go natural because like the hairdressers just didn't really know how to do my hair like that like it just Got didn't you. look right it was always so thick too yeah but I don't I don't remember ever like trying I don't know it being like something in my life that I really had to worry about but you think that you think about yeah yeah yeah, yeah. think about yeah 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 that's cool I mean, all this stuff is part of how we're navigating the world all the time. And uh, it's, it's, it's awesome, man. Human beings are awesome. Hey, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you. We're done. Yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate that.